Okay, so for this video, we are going to discuss uh, the paper 5.1, 76.1 for October, November 2022. Okay, so let's have a look for question number one. We have a probability distribution table, uh, where in the variable x as shown below, and then they are giving us that summation, oh sorry, the expected value for x is equal to 0 0.28. The expected value of x here basically means the mean. They want us to find the value of P and also the value of Q. Okay, so to find the value for P and Q, we actually uh, need to have two equations uh, to solve it simultaneously. And this is one of the equations that we can form from EX equals to 0 0.28. We need another equation, okay, that relates P and Q. So the very first equation that we can form basically comes from the idea that the summation of the probability should be always equals to 1 under a random variable x. Alright, so how to add all the value for the p here? So we will take all the value for p, the probability, which is 0 0.12 plus p plus q plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.3 and should be equals to 1. If you try to simplify all the values here, I will actually get the equation p in terms of q where p is equal to 0 0.42 minus q and this will be my first equation All right then for the second equation we will form it from the information given by the question where the expected value of x is equal to 0 0.28 so to get the value for expected x uh, you should know the, we should know the formula where expected value for x should be summation of x multiplied with p so this is a value for x and this is a value for p. We should multiply them together where I will have negative 2 multiplied with 0 0.12. This is xp, right? And then we have to do the same thing for the next value for the x. So negative 1 multiplied with p. And then 0 0.5 multiplied with q. And the next one will be 1 multiplied with 0 0.16 and so on. And we know that when we calculate the expected value for x, the answer is 0 0.28. Alright, and now if we try to simplify it further, this is what I will get. And now I want to substitute the p with 0 0.42 minus Q. Okay, so 0 0.42 minus Q. This is actually the negative P, right? And then plus 0 0.5 Q. And I try to move all the values, the constant to the other side, and I'm having negative 0 0.24. Okay, then 1.5 Q equals to 0 0.18. And from here, I get a value of Q, which is 0 0.12. Okay, once we get the value for Q, we can also find out the value of P very easily by substituting it into the first equation here. And therefore, my value of P should be equal to 0 0.3. Alright, so we actually get the value for P and Q by solving the simultaneous equation. Alright, so this is how we solve question. Okay, so question number two. We are having the residents of Persham were surveyed about the reliability of their internet service. So we have 12% rated the survey as poor, 36% as satisfactory, and also 52% as good. And we take a random sample of eight residents, uh, the, the eight residents is chosen. So they want us to find the probability that more than two and fewer than eight of these residents rate their internet service as poor, or satisfactory all right so for this question right basically we can see that there are some probability or some percentage are given or proportion are given and then from here we actually have a larger value of a sample size which is 8 and in the question itself we can see that more than 2 or uh, and fewer than 8 from this res residence something something happened to them so basically if you see we are having a sample size a random sample with a larger size and then in the question, if they mention that they are smaller value from the 
larger size from the sample size, right? Something happened to them. This structure of the question basically is binomial distributed, all right? And from here, I know that it is binomial distributed with the n equals to 8. And then we need to put in the probability of proportion for poor and also set, uh, for poor or satisfactory. So we are having 12% as poor, 36% as satisfactory. Therefore, if I add them together, I will get 48%. Where I put it into the proportion, it will be 0 0.48. And from this question, they are asking for the probability that the number of residents is more than 2 but fewer than 8. So if we translate it into a symbol, it will look something like this. Please take note that there is no equal sign. More than and fewer than. Both 2 and 8 are not included. Therefore, you, you will see that there is no equal sign included here. From x equals to 0 until x equals to 8, right? I'm looking for the value that is between x equals to 2 and 8. That means I, I am considering x equals to 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I realized that if I want to find the probability here, you can either find out x equals to 3, x equals to 4, 5, 6, and 7, or you can take 1 minus, minus x equals to 1, 0, 1, 2, and also the 8. Alright, so we have both ways to solve it. Alright, so for me, I'm using 1 minus. So I, I will want to take 1 minus x equals to 0, x equals to 1, x equals to 2, and also x equals to 8. So I'm having 8c0, 0, 0 0.48 power 0, 0 0.52 power 8. And then x equals to 1, 8c1, 0 0.48 power 1, 0 0.52 power 7, and so on. So for x equals to 2, this is what I have. And then after I minus x equals to 0, 1, and 2, I also need to minus x equals to 8. Okay, so after I write out all the calculation, all the formula for binomial distribution already, then we will try to use calculator and help us. Uh. So we are having 1 minus 0 0.175, 186, 0, 113. And correct my final answer to three significant figure, it will be 0 0.825. Alright, so basically this is what we have for part A. And it is binomial distributed. And now let's proceed to part number B. Okay, so for part number B, they are asking, uh, we are given a random sample of 125 residents. And then they want us to use an approximation. So highlight the keyword approximation. Okay, so to find the probability that more than 72 of these residents rate their internet service as good. Again, we have 125 residents, more than 72 of them, something, something happened. So originally, this should be binomial distributed. Okay, so if I write out the distribution formula, the parameter, it will be x is binomial distributed. Then we are having the total sample size, which is 125. And then for the probability here, we need to put in the proportion or the percentage where the service is good. So if you try to refer back to the original question, right? The good one, we are having 52%. Therefore, the proportion here, we should put it at 0 0.52. Okay? Then, because this question already gives us a hint to use an approximation to find out the probability, so we should try to consider and see uh, for binomial distribution, right? When we are having uh, NP, which is more than 5, NQ, which is more than 5, and also N is greater than 30, then basically we should change it become normal distribution. Okay, so to get the normal distribution right, we need the mean here and we need the variance in the parameter of normal distribution. So to get the mean, to get the mean from binomial, right, it should be n times p, which is 125 multiplied with 0 0.52. And I get the mean from binomial distribution, it will be 65. And if I want to get the variance from a binomial distribution, the formula will be npq where it should be 125 multiplied with 0 0.52 multiplied with 0 0.48 and we will get 31.2.
So this is the mean and this is the variance and I put it into my symbol for normal distribution. So 65 and also 31.2. Okay, so after this, after I change it become normal distribution, then I can start calculating the probability. They're asking for the probability that the number of residents is more than 72, means that greater than 72. Okay, then since we are changing it from binomial to normal distribution, right? Binomial is a discrete random variable. And the normal distribution is continuous random variable. Therefore, we should try to, we have to apply continuity correction. So to apply continuity correction for the case where we are having greater than 72, we actually should have and correct it to 72.5. So this is the continuity correction. And since we know that our x is approximately normal now, therefore we should standardize it become z. So 72.5 minus the mean divided by standard deviation which is square root of 31.2 and from here what do we have so we are having the z value which is 1.343 we will make it correct to three uh, three decimal place uh. all right so that we can find out the most accurate answer from the normal distribution table okay so for z greater than 1.343 I have to take 1 minus z smaller than 1.343 from the normal distribution table. So let's have a look for my value of z 1.343. So this is my 1.34 and then 3, which means that you have to take uh, you have to take 5, you have to take the 5, sorry, and add it into the 9099 here. So 9099 plus 5 at the last digit and we'll get 0 0.9104 so for this part we will put in the value for 0 0.9104 and of course we will get an answer which is 0 0.0896 correct to 3 significant figure All right so this is how we find out the probability by using approximation distribution Okay, so now we are at question number three. We are having the Lions and Tigers clubs, the basketball clubs. So the heights in CM for 11 players in each of the team, first team quads are given in the table. So all these are the height of the players from these two clubs. So draw a back-to-back -back stem and leave diagram to represent this information with the Lions on the left. Alright, so uh, we have to draw the stem and leaf diagram. Okay, we will make it into back-to-back -back stem plot. So we are having the stem in the center. So the stem in the center, if you try to observe the value, right, the smallest value should be 169. And I think the largest value among all should be 201. Okay, so that means our stem can be two digits. So I'm having 16, 17, 18, 19, and also 20. And the question requests that we are having the lions on the left, right? So this part will be the lions, and of course this part will be the tigers. So to form and set up this uh, stem to st uh, stem and leaf diagram, uh, basically for the lions, right? We just put in all the value, okay? Then we record we arrange it from small to large value. As an example, for the lion, I'm having one seven eight, so I will put a one seven eight here. So this one is one hundred and seventy eight cm for that particular player. Right, so 186 means that I will put a 6 here for the Lions player so that this denotes 186 cm for this particular Lions player. All right, so we will put in all the value here one by one and rearrange our leaf from small value to large value. Small value should be here and then going to be the large value. Same thing happened for the tigers, so the small value here and then going to be the large value on the right hand side. Alright, so if you successfully plug in all the values and also arrange all the leaf from small values to large value, basically our stem and leaf diagram will look something like this. Then for the tigers, it will look something like this.
Okay, and from here, right, after we completed and plug in all the values inside the stem and leaf diagram, we actually need to show, uh, show them the key. What's the meaning for the diagram here? Okay, so you can simply take any values that you want. It will be good if you can use a few different, uh, use the different value here like for the left value and right value. So we are going to tell them what is the meaning for this particular stem and leaf, uh, stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so maybe I put a key here. So I'm using 18 stroke 17 stroke 9. So that means 178 cm. This one means that 178 cm, right? Okay, so 178 cm, I will write denote here. Okay, 178 cm for player from lions. Okay, and then how about 17 stroke 9? So it will be 179 cm for player from tiger. Okay, so this is how we draw the back-to-back -back stem plot. Okay, then you can double check like, and see whether the values are correct or not. Alright, and don't forget to write out the key at the end of the stem plot. Okay, so we proceed to part number B. They want us to find the median and the interquartile range of the heights of Lions first team squad. So we are interested to get the median and also the interquartile range. Alright, so for the median, basically what you need to do is like we have to search uh, the, the data or maybe the height that's in the center of 11 players. So the center of 11 players will be at the six, the, the six value. Uh. Alright, that means in front I got five value, at the back also I have five value. So the one in the center will be our median. So that is the six value from our data set. So this is the first one, first value. Second value, third value, fourth, fifth, and this is my sixth value here. So for this sixth value, if I read the value from the stamp plot, it will be 186 cm. Therefore, our median will be 186. And next, we are interested to find out the Q1, the first quartile. So if you look at the median and we exclude the median in our data, in front of median, I'm having 5 value here. And the median for the first 5 value will be my Q1, the lower quartile. So where is the center or where is the median for the first set of data here? The first part of the data here, it will be, we are having 5 value here, right? So the center will be actually the fifth, the third value, right? 1, 2, 3, this is the center and then 4, 5. Therefore, this center value here will be my Q1 my lower quartile, and if you read the value, it should be uh, 179. So my Q1 is 179. How about Q3? So same thing happened here. Q3 will be the median for the second part of the data. So my second part of data is this one, these five numbers also. And then the median for this five number will be this one, which is 190. So my Q3 will be actually 190. Therefore, if I want to get the interquartile range, I have to take Q3 minus Q1. Where the answer that we get should be 11. So 11 cm and also the median will be 186 cm. Okay. And now, let's proceed to the next part. Uh, for the tiger, right, they tell us that, okay, the lower quarter is this, median is this, and also the upper quarter is 195. They want us to make two comparisons between the height of the player in lion and also the player from the tiger. Okay, so if the question requests for two comparisons, right, usually when we want to make any comparison, we maybe can try to think about two directions. The first one will be the central tendency. Usually for central tendency, is either the mean, la, the average, alright? So talking about the average, la, central tendency, you can compare the mean, you can compare the median and everything in general. And then another one will be the spreadness of the data, such as a variance, okay, how is the shape of the data and so on. So these are the two points that you can consider to make comparison. Alright, so for the comparison here, 
if we try to compare the general values of all the median Q1 and Q3, right? Median is 186, for Tiger is 190. Then Q1 is 179 for Lion, for Tiger is 183. So basically, you can see that all the value for the Tigers are generally higher than the Lions. So that means oh, the player from the Tigers generally are higher, right? Because they are talking about height man, in this set of data. So we can say that the player from Tiger, the players from Tiger are generally taller. Okay, taller than the players from Lion. Okay, so basically this sentence uh, we are making comparison between tiger and lions are uh, from the central tendency, uh, that means the average. And now we are talking about the spreadness. To measure or to have a look for the spreadness, right? It is quite hard for us to calculate the variance, uh, but we can observe it from the box and whisker plot that we sketched just now or we draw just now. If you try to have a look for all the value here, right? Okay, for lions, for lions, if you try to observe the curve, you will see that it is something like that. And then for the tiger also, it is more or less symmetrical. Okay, you can see that basically their spreadness uh, of the heights of the player, they are not too far away from each other. You can see that these two teams or these two clubs, their majority, um, how do I say, the majority higher still in the in, in center. Okay, this one also in the center. Like if let's say compare or we compare it with the original data for that particular club. So you can see that for Tiger, the smallest value is 179. The highest one is 201. But most of them are focused in the center. So for the line, also the same thing. Okay, we have a little bit for 169. And then the highest one is 196. But you can see that if you try to measure the spreadness of the diagram, basically they are almost having the same spreadness that we cannot also we can't we didn't see anything like oh there's one data is very very far away low or far away higher right so they are generally focused on a certain range which is quite balanced uh, for both team all right so from here i will make a conclusion that about the spreadness uh, i will conclude that the the variance or the spreadness of data of the heights okay from players of both teams or from both tigers and lions okay so the spreadness of heights are uh, from players from both tigers and lions uh, i won't say that they are exactly the same but they should be generally equal. All right. So I will say that uh, uh, similar. It won't be equal. La. I will say they, they, they will not be equal because I believe that there's a difference in the calculation for variance. But uh, for me, my conclusion will be like their spreadness is more or less the same because the, the range of the data spread out is more or less, more or less the same. Okay, so you can see that there are two comparisons here. The first one we compare about the central tendency and another one we compare about the spreadness of the data. Okay, so this is how uh, we answer this question number three. Okay, then we come to question number four. In the large population, the systolic blood pressure like SBP of adults is normally distributed. So we should highlight the keyword normally distributed with the mean and also standard deviation. So find the probability that the SBP of randomly chosen adult is less than 132. Okay, so the question gives us a very obvious keyword, normally distributed. So we know that it is normally distributed with the mean and also standard deviation. So for this question, they want us to find the probability that, so the x is less than 132, so smaller than 132. Since we know this is a normal distribution, right, we should standardize it become z. So to standardize it, I'm taking 132 minus the mean, minus 
divided by standard deviation. So my standard deviation is actually 18.6. Okay, so I think I made the small typo here. Small error here, 125.4. Okay, so after I standardize it, try to get the value of Z correct to three decimal places and we should have 0 0.355. To get the area for z smaller than 0 0.355, we can straight away get it from the normal distribution table. Okay, so the normal distribution basically provides us the value that's smaller than, right? So we're looking for smaller than 0 0.3, so we look for 0 0.35, then 5. And if we try to figure out, it should be 6, 3, 6, 8, plus 19 at the last two digits of this number. So 6, 3, 6, 8, plus 19. Okay, so I will have 0 0.6387 and of course I will want to correct my answer to 3 significant figure it should be 0 0.369 correct to 3 significant figure okay so this is how we solve this first part part A then let's continue to part number B for part number B, they are saying that uh, the SBP of 12-year-old children in the same population is also normally distributed. And then the mean is actually 117 for this group of, two, uh, of children. Of these children, 88% have more than 108 SBP. So find the standard deviation of this distribution. Okay, so according to what we have here, we have a normally distributed distribution X. Uh, with mean 117, but I don't know what is the standard deviation. But from the question itself, I know that 88% is having more than 108 SPP. That means that X greater than 108, the answer should be 88%, which is 0 0.88. Okay, so again, since we know that this is normally distributed, therefore, we should standardize the X become Z. And I'm having 108 minus the mean. So I have to minus the mean here. Minus mean minus 117 divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation, actually, I don't know the value. And it is equals to 0 0.88. When we are having z greater than this value equals to 0 0.88, nah, basically, it means something like this. Nah. We are having a normal distribution curve. And then... The value here should be 0 0.88, alright, so this area should be 0 0.12. So for this 0 0.88 here, what we need to do is like, we have to find out the value of Z from the table. Okay, and we make it become a negative value because the Z at this side should be a negative Z. Alright, and 0 0.88 basically is a probability or the area, so we have a look from the table. Where is 0 0.88? So I'm looking for... A value smaller than 0 0.88 sorry smaller than 0 0.88 nah. so I should look for 0 0.87 something right at 8790 and I read the value of Z from here it will be 1.17 okay 1.17 and I need another 10 at the last two digit right to make it become 0 0.88 so it will be 1.175 Okay, go back to here. My z value is 1.175 negative. So that means uh, when I'm having the value of z, it will be equal to negative 1.175. Again, because I know that this value should be negative 1.175 here. And to get the value for standard deviation, I try to simplify more all my equation here by right we should have 7.66 correct to 3 significant figure as the answer of standard deviation. Okay, so this is how we answer question number B. Right, and we can continue to part C. Okay, so for part C here, now we are having 3 adults chosen at random from this population. And they are saying that find the probability that all of these three adults are having the SBP within 1.5 standard deviation of the mean. 
Okay, so let's have a look for the keyword 1.5 standard deviation of the mean first. If let's say I'm having this value as mean, so 1.5 standard deviation of the mean means that we are having a value that is 1.5 standard deviation away from mean. So that means this particular value will be mu minus 1.5 sigma. Besides this direction, we also have the 1.5 sigma above the mean. So this value will be mu plus 1.5 sigma. So that's basically the meaning of 1.5 standard deviation of the mean. And we want to find out the probability for this one. Therefore, when you want to write it out in a standard uh, in a symbol form, right, it should be mu minus 1.5 sigma x and then mu plus 1.5 sigma. Okay, so that's the meaning for the SPP within 1.5 standard deviation of the mean. That means you have to consider both the low lower direction and also the upper direction here. The lower value here and also the upper value both are having the difference 1.5 standard deviation from the mean in the center. Okay, so we have this symbol and we again we know that this x basically is normally distributed. We have to change it become z or standardize it become z. Okay, so what is the mean minus mu? Okay, how to standardize it? We have to minus mu. Then divided by the standard deviation, and the standard deviation is sigma. Okay, then z. Same thing happened for the upper value here. One, mu plus 1.5 sigma minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So divided by sigma here. And when you try to simplify this equation, okay, so mu minus mu becomes 0. 1.5 sigma divided by sigma, you, have, you are having 1.5 negative then z and then 1.5 to find out this probability we should have z smaller than 1.5 minus z smaller than negative 1.5 according to the normal graph right this is a general formula for us to find out the area between two value okay so what's the value for z smaller than 1.5 so again go back to the question here the normal distribution table for 1.5 the area is 0 0.9332 so I will substitute 9332 into my calculation so z smaller than 1.5 will be 0 0.9332 then minus for the area of z smaller than negative 1.5 it is equal to greater than 1.5 and I need to take 1 minus 0 0.9332 okay so continue with the calculation by using calculator you should get this as your answer okay and this is basically the value at the probability for one adult huh? okay so this is actually the uh, the probability for one adult and having the SPP within 1.5 standard deviation of the mean and now we are looking for three adults in total so this is for one adult therefore for three adults you should have 8664 multiply with 0 0.8664 first adult second adult and also third adult or you can write 8, 0 0.8644 4, 8664 and power 3 if you want okay so when you correct it when you try to calculate the probability for three adults you multiply all the values here 0 0.8664 or 0 0.864 power 3 and Eventually, the answer that you should get is this one, 0 0.650, or you can write become 0 0.650, correct to three significant figures. Okay, so this is how basically we answer the question number four. Okay, so now we are at question number five. We have a game okay with ordinary fair six sided die there's a player chose the die once if the result is two three four five right then the result is the player score and the player does not throw the die again but if the result is one or six then they throw it for the second time the player score is the sum of the two numbers from the two throws so i think this uh, incident is quite clear right the process so draw a fully labeled tree diagram to represent this information so we want to draw a tree diagram to show all the possible results Okay, so for the first row, right, basically we will have six different values here. 
Okay, we might have one. We might get one for the first row. Two, three, four, five. And also another possible value is six ah, for, for the six-sided die. Okay, and then when the dice is a fair die, the probability for every single outcome here will be one over six. Okay, so from here, right, you can see that the final score, this score is equal to two. Okay, then the score is equal to three for this case. The score is equal to 4 and the score is equal to 5 for this particular case here. And then when you, in the first throw, right, when you get 1 or 6, huh, we will throw it for the second time. Where when we throw it for the second time, we also have 6 different outcome, right, for the second throw. Okay, so I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Eh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Same thing happened for the first row is a six ah. so one two three four five and six okay so now i want to put in all the probability so one two three four five six okay again this is a fair die therefore our all the probability here should be one of the six ah. okay so all the probability has to be one of the six so this is one of the six one of the six one of the six and so on. Okay, and then if you want to have a look for the score, right? For this particular result, the score should be as uh, should be one plus one, which is a two. That means it is the sum for the first and the second row. So for this one, the the score is a three. Then this is score four. Score is 5 for this case. Score is equal to 6. Score is equal to 7. Alright. Then for this part also the same. 6 plus 1. The score is 7. Then score is 8. And so on. Okay. So in your tree diagram, basically what you need to show is their result after each throw. And after that, please make sure that you put in the suitable value for the probability for each branch here. So this is my complete tree diagram. Alright, and now if we proceed to part number two. Okay, so we have A and B event. Uh, event A and B defined as follow. A means that the player score is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then B is the player has two throws. Okay, so they want us to show that PA, the probability for A equals to 1 over 3. Again, if we have a look for detail, huh? event A means the score is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, if we go back to have a look for our tree diagram, huh? where are the scores that we are having? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we are having this one. This is the score equals to 5, right? Okay, so for this score equals to 5, for one throw, huh? the probability is 1 over 6. Therefore, my first outcome will be 1 over 6 here. And where else do I have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? So you can see that this is another possible result, right? 5, where it is 1, first row is a 1, second row is a 4. So this one is having a score 5. Okay, so for this score 5, uh, you can see that the probability is 1 over 6 multiplied with 1 over 6. Okay, then for the score, equals to 6 this one is included it is also 1 over 6 and 1 over 6 ah, for the particular probability for this result and also this one 7 so they are looking for 5 6 7 8 9 right so what we need to do is like we try to calculate ah, how many outcome for two throws that fulfill the result 5 6 7 8 9 so you can see that I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. So that means I'm having 6 times of the probability 1 over 6 and 1 over 6. Okay, so I should include it in my calculation for probability below. So I'm having plus 6 times of 1 over 6 and also 1 over 6. 
and if you try to simplify this question or this uh, answer, basically we will have 1 over 3. Okay, so we can get the idea basically from the three diagram that we draw just now. Right? Okay, then let us proceed to part number C. For part number C, they want us to decide whether A and B are independent or not. So to prove whether are they independent or not, we need to find out two value here. The first value will be A intersect with B. Another value will be the probability of A multiply with the probability of B. Okay, so first of all, let us find out the probability of A intersect B first. Okay, so how to find out the answer for A intersect B? Okay, recall again, what is the event A? The score is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Event B means two throws. So if you want to find out A intersect B, means that my score is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and at the same time, it must be two score. Okay, so I think from the three diagram also, like, we have the result already, right? Two score with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are the six results here. Okay, therefore, the probability for A intersect B will be 6 times of 1 over 6 and 1 over 6. So I'm having 6 times of 1 over 6 and also 1 over 6. The answer for A intersect B is 1 over 6. Okay, so to get A multiplied with B, right? I think we need to find out the probability of B first. Huh? So to find out the probability for B where we are having two throws, so what are the outcome that we are having two throws here? So basically, it is this one. We are having two throws, right? All the branches here and also all the branches here. So we are having 1 over 6 multiplied with, uh, sorry, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. Huh? Okay. So this is 1 over 6 uh, plus 1 over 6. Sorry. Because there are two different branches, right? So the probability should be added. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. So if we try to simplify this, I'm having 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. And now I want to find out the value for PA multiplied with PB. So the probability for A in part 1 is 1 over 3, and then multiply with 1 over 3 also, and I get actually 1 over 9. Okay, so now we already find out the A intersect B, we already find out the A times B, and now we want to compare these two values. So you can see that the probability of A intersect B, right, is actually not equal to A dot B. Because one is 1 over 6, another one is 1 over 9. Okay, so since these two values are not the same, right, therefore A and B are not independent. Okay, so what are we going to include in our solution here is we try to show them the calculation and then it will be good if you can tell them what is the reason that you conclude A and B are not independent. So this is a conclusion. Okay, conclusion. And then you must have the reason with your conclusion. Alright, so this is what we get for part C. Then continue further, we are looking for part D. Okay, so for part D, they want us to calculate the probability that B, the conditional probability B given A prime. According to the general formula for conditional probability, it will be A prime intersect with B and then divided by the probability of A prime. Okay, so for A prime intersect with B, again, how should we define it? Huh? So have a look for the definition again. A prime means the score is not 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then some more they are having 2 throw. So what are the cases that the score is not 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 but having 2 throws one? Okay, so if I will want to highlight this will be the result. So this one, having 2 throws, okay. But the score is not 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This one also the same. This one also the same. And then this three also. So from here, for the blue color probability, you can still see that each branch, the probability is 1 over 6, multiplied 1 over 6. 
and then we are having six different cases here right so we have to multiply it with six okay so this is the probability for a prime intersect with b okay so come back to our question here we will put in a prime intersect with b the probability is six multiply with one of the six and also one over six and divide by what divide by the a prime probability the probability for event a is one over three in part b that we prove so a prime will be one minus the event a probability which is minus one over three okay so from here if we try to simplify i'll have one over four as the final answer for this conditional probability Okay, so this is how we answer this question number 5. Okay, so for the last question for this paper, we have the social club with 15 members and then 8 are men, 7 are women. Then the committee of the club consists of 5 of its members. So the committee member, there are 5 committee members here. Find the number of different ways in which the community can be formed from the 15 members if it must include more men than women. So when you want to form any committee or any community, right, the members should be selected or chosen, right? So the selected and chosen tell us that we should use a combination method to find out the committee member, all right, to find the answer for this part. Lah. Okay, then for this question, they are asking for more men than women. So for five committee members, ah, in what are the cases that we will have more men than women? So the first case will be, I might have three men and then two women okay then the second case is I'm having four men one woman and also the third case will be five men zero women so all the cases here that I list out uh, is actually the fulfill the condition that we are having more men than women in the five committee members right okay so for three men two women Originally, we are having 8 men in total, right? So it should be 8C3. From 8 men, you want to choose 3 and then multiply with 7C2. Okay, so we are selected. We select all these members, so we have to use combination method. Then for 4 men and 1 women, it should be 8C4 multiply with 7C1. And then for this case, it will be 8C5 multiply with 7c0 okay so if you try to use calculator to help you to calculate all the value here right these are the result for each case here each cases here and after that for the final answer we have to total them up so by right we should have 1722 as the final answer And next question. So for part number B, they are now having the photograph taken. Eh? They stand in three rows. Ah. First row, three people. Second row or middle row, five people. Seven people in the back row. Okay, so they are asking, in how many different ways can the 15 members of the club be divided into a group of three? So again, when they want us to divide the group into the group of three, a group of five, and also a group of seven, right? Basically, we are using combination method to solve it also. Right, so at first, I'm having 15 members, and I want to choose three of them to be placed in the first group or first row, which have three members. Okay, after I take out three members already, I left only 12 members here. So 12 members, I want to choose five of them and put it in the middle row, put them in the middle row. And after that, remaining, I'm still having seven. Seven members, I want to put all of them into the back row. So basically, this is our calculation. And we have to multiply them so that we are having the complete photograph session with three rows. Huh? So I have to multiply, but not plus, right? Then, if you multiply everything together, the answer is quite nice, which is 360, 360. And this is our answer for part B. Okay, then proceed to the part C. In one photograph, we are having these uh, seven members like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
So they are should be they all of them should be in the back row. Okay. In how many different ways can these seven members be arranged? So how is the keyword arrange? Basically, for the word arrange, it tells us that uh, the solution for this question should be on permutation where you can see NPR in your solution or maybe N factorial in your solution, right? Then there are some conditions here. A and B are next to each other. G, F and G are not next to each other. So there are two conditions here. A and B cannot be separated. So A and B must be always together. And I will bundle them in as one group. That means I will treat them as one unit. Okay, so I'm having C, D, E, a, B, and then C, D, E, right? Then F and G must be separated because F and G, I don't know what happened to them, but they are not next to each other. Okay, so when we are having not next to each other case, we will arrange them at last. We only arrange the re remaining person first. Huh? And A and B are treated as one unit. So consider as one unit. Then I want to arrange two. This is the second person third person and fourth person here so we want to arrange four person at first at the beginning so i'm having four factorial when i arrange four factorial here what i need to do is i need to consider the position for both a and b as well because they actually can exchange their position right so exchange of the position between a and b can be two or two factorial Alright, and after I arrange all the all this person A, B, C, D, E already, now I want to put in F and G. To put in F and G, I have to make sure that I slot them in between, okay, all the person that I already arranged them. Stop between A, B, C, D, E. La. Of course, F and G cannot stop between A and B la, because A and B cannot be separated. They must be standing next to each other. So the possible space that we can slot in the F and G will be here. One, two, 3, 4, and also 5. So there are 5 spaces available here to slot in 2 person. Therefore, when we write out the permutation here, it should be 5P2. Okay, so again, by using calculator to help us, the number of different ways that we can arrange them is hundred and uh, 960 ways. Okay, so... This is how we make the calculation for the permutation, the number of permutation for this question. Alright, okay, so here we ended our discussion for this paper and thank you very much for watching this video.